Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to Breaking Open the Word, the Sunday edition of the God Minute. I'm Father Michael. Beloved of God, today, many of the dioceses around the United States are celebrating the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord. It's a feast that has been transferred to this day in order that we might celebrate completely and as a whole community the events of this holy season of Easter. Now the gospel chosen for us today uh, for this feast is from the 24th chapter of Luke, verses 46 through 53. So let's just place ourselves in the presence of God that we might listen to his word. Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city, until you are clothed with the power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands and blessed them. As he blessed, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After a particularly moving homily about bringing the Gospel to others, a woman stopped the priest after Mass and said, Father, I feel that God is calling me to preach the Gospel. But the trouble is that I'm a wife and a mother with 12 children. What should I do? The priest replied, My dear sister, I am delighted to hear that you have heard God's message and that God has called you to preach the gospel. I'm even more delighted to hear that he has already provided you with a congregation in your own home. <laughs> uh, a lesson for us all, I'm sure. You know, the ascension of the Lord into glory is not a moment whereby Jesus abandons us. Rather, it is a moment of promise and fulfillment of his plan for us until and when he returns in glory. The Lord Jesus, ascending in glory to the Father, did so with a promise that he would always be with us. This means that every moment of our lives, through every blessing and challenge, with every success and failure, God is with us. He provides for us, particularly through the sacramental life of the church, the Eucharist, everything we need to survive the tough times and to rise above our human weaknesses, as well as celebrate the blessings and graces in our life, the good times, enabling us to glorify the Lord. Can you believe how much the Lord loves us? It's extravagantly amazing. I read a beautiful old story which tells of how Jesus, after his ascension into heaven, was surrounded by the holy angels who began to inquire about his work on earth. Jesus told them about his birth, his life, his preaching, and even his death and resurrection, and how he had accomplished the salvation of the world. The angel Gabriel asked, Well, now that you are back in heaven, who will continue your work on earth? And Jesus replied, While I was on earth, I gathered a group of people around me who believed in me and loved me. They will continue to spread the gospel and carry on the work of the church. Gabriel was perplexed. 
You mean Peter, who denied you three times, and all the rest of that gang who ran away when you were crucified? You mean to tell me that you left them to carry on your work? And what will you do if this plan doesn't work, Lord? Jesus replied, I have no other plan. It must work. You know, truly, Jesus has no other plan than to depend on the efforts of his followers, you and me. In the last year, we've experienced a great deal of change and challenge in our lives. I know these things can either be stepping stones or stumbling blocks. It all depends on our openness and our attitude. Could the Lord be calling us to more as he did the apostles? Is it possible that God desires greater things from us because we are so blessed? Could we possibly trust enough to take a risk and see how God will use us for the blessings and evangelization of his world? Can he use our weaknesses to help us grow in holiness? Never forget that the Lord is ever faithful. He would not do anything to harm us. His love is constant. His mission for us is clear. He is with us, in us. I'm certain the spiritual renewal of each one of us as we are empowered by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit can only enable us to rejuvenate the mission of the gospel. And each, in our own way and with our own various gifts and talents, can accomplish that. You know, there's a story told about Leonardo da Vinci who had, a, uh, who had started a, a beautiful work on a large canvas in his studio. For a while, he worked at it, choosing the subject, planning the perspective, sketching the outline, applying the colors with his own unparalleled genius. Then suddenly he stopped. He just didn't work on it anymore. So he summoned one of his talented students. The master had invited him to complete the work. The horrified student protested, that he was both unworthy and unable to complete the great painting which his master had begun. But da Vinci silenced him. Will not what I have done inspire you to do your best? Jesus, our master, began to spread the good news some 2,000 years ago by what he said and did, and supremely by what he suffered. Jesus illustrated his message and left us to finish his work. Will Jesus' life not be an inspiration for us to finish the picture, to paint the canvas? Brothers and sisters, next weekend we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the faithful, the birthday of the church. The Holy Spirit is from Jesus to his faithful ones. Let us be renewed in the Spirit and rekindle our faith in action as we seek to glorify the Lord and to continue his work. The Feast of the Ascension of the Lord presents Jesus' commissioning of us before returning to the Father in heaven. He tells the disciples and us today that he will send his spirit and instruct us to go out and continue his mission. Jesus' ascension into heaven is not the conclusion of his work on earth, but rather a handing on of his work to each one of us, his chosen, his beloved. And as beloved followers of Jesus Christ, we are being commissioned by Jesus to carry on the good work he has begun here on earth by serving our brothers and sisters, by caring for the needs of all, reflecting the love of Christ and intentionally living the values of the gospel in our world. As he promised, he is with us. 
we've been very blessed through the sacramental life of the church with the grace of God and the knowledge and power of his love to carry on the task of preaching the good news of Jesus Christ with our lives. It's our responsibility to live the values Jesus lived. It's our responsibility to teach the values that Jesus taught and the values he died for. Making his presence known in our world by our words and our deeds. Let's come together in solidarity, recommitting ourselves to more faithfully live our faith by seeking to know, love, and serve the Lord, and to do so by serving him and our brothers and sisters. Pray this week in anticipation of the renewal of the Holy Spirit and its sevenfold gifts. If necessary, ask the Lord for an extra dose of those gifts. After all, He's already provided us with a very needy congregation to serve. And the task ahead of us is great. We will need every blessing we can get. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, take good care of yourself and one another, and we'll see you tomorrow.